Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 114 of ASP.NET video series. In this video, we'll discuss about adding properties to composite custom controls. In part 112 of this video series, we have discussed the basics of ASP.NET composite custom controls. And in part 113, we have discussed about adding these controls to Visual Studio Toolbox. In this video, we'll discuss about adding properties to the composite custom controls. If you haven't watched parts 112 and 113, I strongly recommend to watch those videos first before proceeding with this video. Video. At the moment, the calendar composite control does not have an image associated with the image button. So if you look at the state of our composite custom calendar control, it looks like this. We have an image button here, but look at this. There is no image associated with this image button. Now I want to associate the image that you can see here, calendar.jpg. I want to associate this image with the image button you know, with this custom calendar control. Let's see how to do that. Obviously, if we have to do that, we have to have a property defined on this composite calendar control. Okay, so where is this calendar control defined? If you remember, we have created that in the custom controls project. You know, the custom calendar control is in its own project, custom controls. Okay, so to this class, custom calendar class, we need to add a property which the end users can use to set the image of their choice for the image pattern. Okay, so we need to expose a property on this control. Okay, so let's call the property as image button image URL property. So we have an image button within this custom calendar control. We have an image button and we want to associate an image with that image button. So I'm going to call my property as image button image URL property. Look at that. That's going to be the name of the property, image button image URL. And it's a string type. Obviously, the path of the image is a string, so the type of the property is string. And it's a public property, so it's available outside of that control as well. And look at this. I'm using two attributes here, the category attribute and description attribute. So what are these attributes and why are we using them? To understand the need of these attributes, actually, look at any of the control. Let me drag and drop another button control, maybe, from the toolbox onto the web form. So I have this button control. Now, If I flip to the design mode, select that button and press F4 to get to the properties of the button. Look at this. When we are in the properties mode, you know, look at this. I have sorted these properties by category. They're not in alphabetical order. They're categorized. So we have different categories here. Now that's the category. Appearance, for example, is the category. And within that, we have the property displayed here. And look at this. When I select a property, the property description appears here. Okay, so basically for the property that we are going to set for this custom calendar control, I'm specifying the category under which this property should appear and the description for that property. So I'm saying this must appear under appearance category and the description is sets the image icon for the calendar control. Okay, so that's the category and description attributes. This is an image button image URL property of type string with public access modifier because we want users to use this property to set the image of their choice for the image button. Okay, and then it's going to have both get and set accessors. Now, here within the get accessor, what we are doing now, this image button image URL, whatever image they set to this property, what we need to do with that property, that image will be used to set the image URL property of the image button that we have. So we have this image button object. So this image button object has got an image URL property. So anytime they set a value, okay, that value, we are setting that to the image URL property of the image button in the set accessor. Okay, but look at this. Before we actually set the value, we are making a call to ensure child controls method. So what is this ensure child controls method? Now this ensure child controls method, you know, basically this will ensure or you know this this method will check if the child controls are created. If the child controls are not created, then this method will trigger a call to create child controls method. So if you remember, we have this create child controls method, which actually creates the child control object. So this custom calendar control is actually composed of three child controls, the text box, image button, and calendar control. Okay, so this ensure child controls. So look at this, what we are trying to do here, 
Using this property, we will either try to get a property of the of one of the child controls, which is the image URL property of the image button. We will try to retrieve that using the get accessor, or we'll try to set the value for that property for the child control. But in order for us to be able to do that, that child controls must be created in the first place. So if the controls are not already created and if somebody is trying to set or get the value of that property from the child control, we don't want null reference exceptions. So that's why we call this method ensure child controls anytime we try to retrieve or you know set a property of a child control just to make sure that this method is going to ensure there are going to be child controls because this will check if the child controls are already created. If not, this method is going to trigger a call to create a child controls method, which will make sure the child controls are created. And then we will either set the value or get the value. So within the get access of what we are doing, we are checking if the image URL is not null. If it is not null, then return the image URL else return string dot empty. It's as simple as that. So a simple image button image URL property. Now let me build the solution with that change. So all we have done so far for this custom calendar control is that we have added this property and I have built the solution, build succeeded. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the web application project where we are testing this and I'm going to get rid of this register directive and the control declaration because we, since we have changed the code, let's remove those references and re-add them. Also, if you remember in the solution, we have a reference to custom controls project. Let's go ahead and remove that as well. And then from the toolbox, let's remove this custom calendar. And to remove that, simply right click, choose items. And from the choose items to, uh, toolbox, all we have to do is get rid of that custom calendar control. So custom calendar, let's get rid of that. Click OK. Now let's clean the solution. And then let's re-add the composite calendar control. So choose items. And we know that the project is created in the C drive. So I'm going to browse to C drive, custom controls, bin, debug, and then the assembly. That should re-add the custom calendar. Now we have this custom calendar control. Let me drag and drop onto this web form. And now remember we have added that image button image URL property. So let me go to this control and press F4 to get to the properties window. And look at this. Now you have to make sure that you are in categorized view mode of the properties window. If you are in alphabetics order, it will still show the property, but it will not show the category under which uh, it has to appear. But if I saw that by category, then look at that category. Uh, the image button image URL property is present under appearance category. And also notice in the properties window at the bottom here, uh, it's showing the description that we have uh, specified when we are actually building that control. So sets the image icon for the calendar control and look at that's the same description that we have here. And look at the category. It is appearing under appearance category. OK, now I need to set uh, you know, an image. I need to associate an image to this image button within this calendar control. And we have this property to do that. So if you look at this, within the images folder, I have this calendar.jpg. I have already copied and pasted that image into images directory. So within this project, I have images directory. And within that, I have calendar.jpg. So I want to associate this image button now to that particular image. So let's see how to do that. So image button URL. So I'm going to set that to images forward slash calendar dot jpg. OK, now look at this. As soon as I set that property there, it's not actually, look at that. If I go to the source, it has set that property. Oh, it's actually calendar dot jpg. OK, look at that. It's, it's not actually showing that image immediately there. I saved that, but still, it's not showing that image. But let me go ahead and run this now. But at runtime, it actually shows that. Look at this. At the design, at design time, it's not picking up that change to that property. In fact, it's not retaining that value. But look at this. At runtime, it's actually showing that image to me. So how do we correct that? At design time, I still want, as and when I change my properties, I want the control, you know, the designer to update the control immediately. Because 
if you remember you know if I drag and drop a button control if I change the text for the example on the button it will be the change will be immediately reflected on the design surface at design time okay but look at this at runtime it, it correctly shows the image uh, that is associated with this image button as expected but at design time it's not picking up that uh, property change so what what do I need to do to correct this problem it turns out that it's very simple to correct that problem all you have to do is within the control within the custom control we have to override another method called a recreate child controls method okay so we have this recreate child controls method this is called by visual designer visual studio designer to recreate the child controls at design time so basically what should happen is when we change this property at design time the image button image URL property at design time um, you know the child control need to be recreated and then assign this property so that the change will be shown immediately at design time to the end user whoever is changing this property and to do that we have to override this recreate child controls method and this recreate child controls method is actually coming from the base composite control class so if you look at this custom calendar class it enables it's from composite control and within composite control we have this virtual method recreate child control so all we have to do is override that method so if I type override and then press space and then type recreate child controls look at that that method is coming from composite control class okay press tab and it should automatically generate the skeleton structure for that method and all I have to do here is call ensure child control method okay and if you remember what does this ensure child controls method will do it will check if the child controls are already created if they are not created it's going to trigger a call to create child controls method which will actually create the child controls for us okay so that's the second change that we have to do let me rebuild this project here so rebuild the solution and let me go to the web application project where we are testing this let me remove the control from the toolbox so right click choose items and then let me remove the control from the toolbox so custom calendar that should remove that reference and let me go ahead and get rid of the control declaration and the control itself also remove it from the references folder okay and let me rebuild this okay that's fine now let me go ahead and add the control back to the toolbox choose items and navigate to C drive so C drive custom controls custom controls bin debug and the custom controls assembly click OK let's drag and drop that now onto the designer surface we should add the custom calendar control and let's flip the web form to design mode go to the properties window now let me change again this one to images for slash calendar oops let, let's change this to images for slash uh, images folder Okay, let me copy the name let's get to the calendar control and images for slash calendar dot jpg look at that the moment I have changed that property it's actually reflected within that control now for us at design time itself and all we have done until now is to override that method recreate child controls method okay so we have corrected that problem but then there is still an issue with this look at the alignment of the text box and the uh, image button there you know they're not properly aligned so basically what I, what I want to do is I want to resolve this cosmetic issue as well and to resolve this cosmetic issue if we put this text box control and this image button control inside a table then they are going to appear uh, properly you know basically I want this to be uh, you know aligned in center with the text box okay so let's go ahead and put these controls in a table control okay and to do that I'm going to go back to the custom calendar control and change this 
render method. Now all we are doing at the moment is we are rendering the text box control and the image button and calendar. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this text box and image button inside a table. Okay, I'm going to put both the controls in the same table row. Okay, so I how am I going to render a, a table using this text writer object? It's very easy to do. So I have some code already typed for that. So let's go ahead and change that method. And then let me copy and paste the method here. It's the same render method. All I'm doing at the moment is, in addition to rendering the text box, image button, and calendar control, I'm also rendering a table. Okay, so basically we have this HTML text writer object. Uh, I'm calling this method add attributes to render because we need to call this method because I'm adding a cell padding uh, attribute as well. Okay, so that's an attribute for a table. So cell padding of one. Okay, I'm I'm adding that using add attribute method. And look at this. I'm using the render begin tag of the writer object to render an HTML table. Okay, an opening tag for the HTML table. And after the table is rendered, we know that a table is a collection of table rows, and each table row is a collection of table uh, data, that is table cells. Okay, so I am first rendering a begin tag for table, and then within the table we'll have a TR, so a begin tag for TR. And within the TR, we need a TD, so we have a TD here. And then within the TD, I'm adding a text box control, and then I am closing the TD. And after that, again, open another TD, and then render the image button within that TD, and then close the TD. Okay, so basically, the text box and image button are present in the same row, but in different TDs. Okay, so this should properly align them. And then finally, what we need to do, we need to close the TR. This will close the TD, the end tag for TD. This will close the TR, and this will close the table. And finally, render the con uh, calendar control outside of that table. So it's as simple as that. So it's it's simple, a repetition of code. This method looks a little big, but it's, it's all uh, simple and straightforward code just to render the image button and text box inside a table. That's it. So let me rebuild this, and this should correct that cosmetic issue as well. So build solution, let's go back to Visual Studio. Let's remove this custom calendar from the toolbox. So let me go to the toolbox and get rid of that custom calendar. And let's go to the Solution Explorer, remove the reference for that, and remove the control declaration itself and the control itself. So at this point, we should have you know, the alignment issue also fixed. So let me re-add the control. So choose items, browse to C drive. So computer should be in C drive, custom controls. And within that custom controls, bin, debug, and then custom controls.dll. So I have that custom calendar. Let me drag and drop that. So we have the control there. Flip to the design mode. Let's set the image button image URL. So image is forward slash calendar dot jpg. Oops. Calendar. images for slash calendar dot jpg so that should pick up that image and look at that even at design time it's properly aligned there so if I go ahead and run this at this time as you might expect it should be properly aligned okay so look at that, it's properly aligned there. Now, this calendar control, the custom calendar control, still has some issues. For example, when the calendar control renders, we don't want this calendar to be immediately visible to the user. Initially, only the text box and the image button should appear. When I click this image button, that's when this calendar should appear. And then as soon as I select the date, the selected date should be populated within this text box control. We'll, we'll see how to solve these issues in our next video session.
On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.